Hello and welcome to the last tackle. The Betfred Super League was back with a bang last weekend. Loads to discuss. Earl Crabtree and Kevin Brown are in the studio. Uh, Kev, we were just saying off air, uh, been a great start to the Super League season, isn't it? We're about to go into round 11. Great start. It's been unbelievable. I think the closest competition every game, I don't know whether I'm bad at tipping or it, it, it just seems like it's a coin toss. Um, everyone can beat everyone and there's probably only Wakefield who you expect not to win every game, but they're getting closer to the game that they had against Warrington. Yeah, we'll talk Brilliant. about that. Uh, and Earl, obviously, we Huddersfield had not a great start, but generally for the Betfred Super League, some really entertaining games. Yeah, I think with the years of experience that we've got between ourselves, it does seem that we have no clue about rugby league at times. Uh, Huddersfield, Noted. the expectation, yeah. Um, I have to admit it myself, there was a lot of expectation and that expectation has changed somewhat. And for a lot of teams as well, there's been a few big performances throughout the year so far and you can never quite know exactly who's going to win, which makes it exciting for the punters. Yeah, well, let's talk about round 11. <clears throat> and let's start on Thursday night, Hall 14, Wigan 10. Now, Adrian Morley has sat in your seat quite a lot this year and he has said Tony Smith will turn it around. I wasn't so sure, but he's won the last two now. He has, and I, and I just didn't see him getting anything out of either of these games. I think at home especially, that's where they've really struggled. They got well beaten by Salford and a couple of other teams along the way, but you know, to beat a very good Huddersfield side and then to back that up and beat a, a fantastic Wigan side, one of the best consistently this year already. I think the form of David Litton at fullback, the young lad who, who Tony's brought in, he's pretty good at that, Tony, bringing people in, giving them back in. And and he's getting the rewards from it. So fair play to Tony and Hull. That was a it was a performance full of character because he had to soak up a lot of pressure, especially in the second half. Did Hull? Yeah, do you know what? They're a team with big names within the side as well, but disappointing throughout the year so far. But I think Tony Smith's going to get that out of the players at times. The forwards, I thought, were spectacular at times as well, marching forwards. And I think it's Sal, uh, Ligue Sal with uh, the, the big carry or Sata. Um, they've got some big metres post contact, which kind of shows that determination that they didn't want to be put down. And I think that lifts the team as well. Uh, they showed some character, and I think that's the first time we've kind of seen that. But I still think they'll have ups and downs throughout the season. And I don't think they're completed as a project yet. I think there's a big project there for Tony Smith and he's working it out, working the team out that he wants as well. But winning gives you confidence and you can see that already. I'll tell you who is starting to get into the game. Jake Clifford, he's really building yeah. into the season and yeah. if he can, you know, hit the heights that they expected and yeah, then Tex Oil come back. Yeah, he just looked like a a very, very accomplished it's athlete. He's a smart player, isn't he? You see the little kicks through and stuff yeah. like that. He picks the, the, the kick at the right time and, uh, you know, stretching over as well. He's one of those players that puts himself in the right place yeah. and he's got the talent to back it up as well. Uh, and a quick word on Wigan. Obviously, there's a lot of rugby to go. A Challenge Cup last season, I think Matt Peters took him to another level again this year. Yeah, I think that they're always going to be a tough team. We've always looked at Wigan and uh, being one of those teams that are there or thereabouts at the business end of the season. And sometimes it takes a while for them to find their feet. But the players that they've got in the team, and you look at just the centres as well, uh, obviously Jake Wardle, Toby King, two players that were not really in favour at Huddersfield, but then they go to Wigan and he gets the best out of them. And I think that's the difference. You know, the, the coaches sometimes see something different in a player, and those two players are standing head and shoulders above some of the other centres in Super League. Now, if you can get that sort of performance out of players that were out of favour somewhere else and you can bring it out of them throughout the season you stand the chance at the end of the season they're in good form and really yeah. confident they're going to be there or thereabouts aren't they they are they, they, and I think he's earned the right to rest a few players you know Ian Thornley coming back in here I actually thought he was Great probably game. Wiggins best he yeah. scored a couple of tries so I think the rotation that he's bought by being so consistent this year and, and the resilience, we were speaking off camera, the, the resilience that they like the old Wigan again. Yes. When they're not playing for great, the scrap. they're still in it, aren't yeah. they? They're never easy to beat. So they're going to be there or thereabouts in both competitions for me. And then on uh, Friday, we had an absolute cracker. Uh, the Catalans versus uh, St Helens. Well, it was a cracker in a warm-up, wasn't it? Uh, they got beefed up in the warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we can laugh now because no one was hurt. 
But yeah. I mean, this was just incredible, Kev. Yeah, let, let's get all the lads warming up in red shirts and, <laughs> and walk a bull around in a lead. So what could go wrong? And it's not a small bull either. No. Um, the fair play to the two French guys <laughs> just coming over and saying stop. It's the beginning of the clip where someone's dragged along the floor. You don't <laughs> yeah, see yeah, that yeah. The physio in the background. I, I don't think I, I would have ever run as fast yeah. in a warm-up if uh, there were bull chasing. Good pre-match entertainment, though. I'll give well, this that. is the yeah, kind of entertainment I am G1, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just need him bet Fred on the side of the cow. <laughs> if only we'd have known. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the game itself. Um, I mean, well done, Saints, as well. It took 1,500 fans out there as well. They were 12 nil up. 12 nil up, Saints. Now, Saints are out of the, the top six at the moment. There's a brilliant article on our website uh, at The Sportsman as well saying the last time uh, Saints finished out of the top six... Uh, Stephen Hendry had just won his fourth World Snooker title and uh, status quo recorded Come On Your Reds with Manchester United ahead of the cup final. So what was that? 1994. I mean, surely Saints aren't going to finish out of the top six, are they? I don't think so. I no. think they're too good. I think they started the game very well. Obviously, Wellesby and Wormsley got them off to a great lead, but they came up a bit... Wormsley the bull. Wormsley the bull, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt like that a few times, like that fella holding the lead, but... Um, <laughs> No, Saints will come good. They've got a very good yeah. coach there. They are, whether it's a hangover or, or whatever you want to call it, they are suffering from putting so much emotion and effort into the World Club Challenge. But Saints will come good, in my opinion. They've got very good players, a very good coach. They'll come together. They've had a lot of injuries and suspensions as well. Yeah. And I still think everyone will be looking over the shoulder and I think it'll have to be a bit longer than status quo to Saints stay in the top six. <laughs> uh, Saints won five, lost five. Yeah, I, again, I think obviously the, the back of uh, going to Australia and doing what they needed to do there and uh, becoming world club champions, I think there is a little bit of a hangover to that. But also there's a, a different sort of regime as well with Wellens there. I think it's taken a little bit of time to find their feet and their sort of cut the coaching style maybe slightly different. But I, uh, I would have no fear whatsoever in the Saints team. Uh, you know, we, the talent that they've got, Wellsby and Wormsley, as we've said already, to score uh, two tries there, which are just... Uh, individual tries, you know, Wormsley just being so big and strong, and Wellsby with the speed and the footwork that he has, they have the individual players, and when they put it on and when they turn it on, uh, they can beat absolutely anybody. I Confidence think what they there, probably right? have lost, though, is that invincibility, yeah. where teams yeah. will turn up expecting yeah. to lose. Mm. People will go there now going... I think teams lost... Walking out, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. But don't so take I... it away from Catalan, though, as well, because... I was about to come they to that. Were they had lost three on the bounce going me. into that. Yeah, they were, I thought they were great. They and they were very good, it. especially in the second half. And it could have gone the other way as well. You know, when you start going behind for a couple of really good tries yeah. from the opposition, like you said, they've lost that invincibility of saying, so Catalan obviously still believe, but it's a rugged performance and right at the back end of the game, some smart players. Yeah. Uh, the half pass kicking the ball over yeah. to Davis on the wing, they were smart players waiting for that moment, the right moment. And they picked it at the right time and went on to win it and uh, deservingly so as well. So, yeah, Dark yeah. Horses, Catalan, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you fancy Catalan certainly finishing in the playoffs, don't you? And what about Hull KR? Could they finish in the playoffs? Six on the bounce now. Willie Peters is doing a brilliant job. Well, Earl mentioned before the sign of a good coach, uh, Matty Peter at Wigan, is getting the best yep. out of his players. And I think you could probably throw Paul Rowley and definitely Willie Peters in there because... You know, I, I worried for, for Hull KR in this game when Jordan Abdul was out injured because he's such a focal point with their attack. But the way that they're, they're not only working hard for each other, they've got great middles in Minchella and, and the other, and Sauer who, who back him up. But then the halfbacks and the fullbacks are really just, it, just threat all over. They look a very balanced side. And Ryan Hall. Well, I was going to say, you've not even mentioned Ryan Hall. That Ryan second Hall. try is awesome. Yeah, yeah. He. Um, no, he showed, he showed some pace and, and he's a very, very big man. And, and he's I, getting on a bit. And he'll say himself, he is at the latter <laughs> stage of his career, but what well, a no, terrific player. He's playing player. brilliant for Hulk Howard. He's, he's, he? he's playing as good as I've seen him for a long time and he looks like he's having fun. And why wouldn't he when he's getting good service and winning every week? Yeah, I think mistakes made by Huddersfield, but I think a team that controls the game will often go in and win it, and that's exactly what Hull KR did. They played to the conditions, a little kicks through. I thought the kicking game was fantastic. Um, kept getting the um, 
defence up and then kicking behind and uh, they just really controlled it in wet weather uh, conditions and then Huddersfield did quite the opposite throwing the ball over the top you keep it away from Ryan Hall in those positions because he is a very experienced very good player and he's still got that pace to burn as well and he puts Kevin Aguama yeah. on his backside for fun he's a big strong bloke keep the ball away from him especially in the air and I think we just um, as, a, as a team went away from what we should do and I thought Hulk Air were exceptional really controlled it played to the conditions and played as a team uh, Huddersfield probably the opposite and they've got a lot of thinking to do of coach has got a lot of uh, probably pressure on his shoulders at the moment it's his team and they're not performing so he needs to work out a way to get them to perform so how tough is it at Huddersfield at the moment because there was the expectation wasn't there going into this season of a a defeat in the Challenge Cup ninth just won four yeah, I think um, the, the manner of the performances are what is the uh, real worry at the moment. Uh, lack of intensity against Hull SC, there was no real intensity there and you could see that they were well up for it and getting into uh, the Huddersfield players defensively as much as anything else, driving them back. And I see a lack of confidence, a lack of belief in the players at the moment for Huddersfield, probably going away from game plan a little bit as well, chasing games. Um, when you've not got that belief, it makes it very That's difficult. That's what Ian Watson said. And he's, went out the window. he's got to get that belief into the players, playing for each other as well. And can you do that in one week? I'm not so sure, but whoever he puts out there has to have belief in. And they have to believe in him and the system as well. I think it's a tough period for Huddersfield, but I do think they'll bounce back. We've got the players definitely to do it, but you know they've got to have the attitude and the desire to want to do it as well. Well, let's just go down at the motorway a little bit. Leeds, also very inconsistent. This term. Yeah, I've seen a few mistakes and so the, the game plan as well from what I'm seeing is just sort of a, a bit erratic. I'd say that about them at the moment. And we have heard sort of a, a little bit of disgruntlement within the team. Uh, I think obviously when you start getting like Blake Austin set, set, set off just a sim bin, it does disrupt the team as well. I think they're chasing a little bit. They're not really sure where they're at. And they're another team, a little bit like Huddersfield, who are not... Uh, and not firing in on cylinders at the moment. I think it could change, but for me, Huddersfield and Leeds are not two of the stronger teams, and I don't know how that changes. If Leeds are inconsistent, one of your old club, Salford, are having a great season. Amazing. Um, you know, I think Paul Rowley's one of, not, if not the best, coach in the competition at the minute. The way he's got such a small budget and resources, you talk about Huddersfield having... They're littered with quality players now. Paul Rowley has to get the same group of guys playing well every week. And if someone doesn't play well, he can't just bring someone in and swap it around. He has to manage that group and get them playing well. And the way they are playing as a group, very balanced. But I think the four, Briarley, Ackers, Sneed and Croft, just as yeah. good as any yeah. combination. It's great to fan. watch. Great to watch. It's a brilliant style. Yeah. But winning away 22 points to 12 shows that they can roll the sleeves up and also do it tough as well because we have seen them blow teams away and win by 60, but then they've got that on the flip side where they can grind a game out. Um, Lee Castleford. It's three in a row for Lee. Yeah, and, and you know we've been on here a few times and said how good Derek's doing, and, and fair play to him. He, he has set the tone for this club. No fashion sense. <laughs> but, but doing no a great fashion job. sense, definitely not. But um, he's doing a great job. He's doing a great job not only getting the punters in, yeah but also making them happy when they're there with their entertainment and the entertainment on the field. Another team who's playing great stuff, I think the fact that Adrian Lamb could bring his son over, Lachlan Lamb, I yes. think he's been a superstar. I, I was expecting good things of him um, and, I, and I watched him last year and he was good. This year I think he's been better again and he Pape in the middles as well. Earl, you, you'll, you'll tell me about the ball playing middles, how hard it is being big and, and tough, but also having that ball playing ability, which... Lammy's got his side doing. Yeah. We'll talk about Cass in a minute because we're going to hear from their uh, new coach, uh, Craig Lingard, who's going to do this uh, dual role. Let's just go on to the final game. Warrington-Wakefield. Right, we've spoken about Wakefield a lot this season. 53 minutes gone, it was 12 all. It was, and Kevin Proctor let him down. It was an eye tackle on Matty Ashton. He, uh, he got his technique wrong and, and, he, and he had to walk. So, and, and from there, it nosedived, but... I think this is a positive for Wakefield. I think three tries in a game is, is very rare for a Wakefield side. Doing it away against potentially the best team in the competition yeah. so far, you've got to say is a step forward. So, albeit, yeah, they've lost another game and they're not going to be happy, it's definitely green shoots of improvement. And how big was that for Warrington, obviously, the two defeats? 
It, it was big, and, and at 12-12, it, it looked like, oh, no, have Warrington bubbled as yeah. the bubble burst, and are we going back to something like last year? But fair play to them. They showed some grit there, because I know what it's like when you're expected to win easy and expected to win easy at home. And when it doesn't quite start that way, the fans just start. Yeah. And I thought George Williams stood up again. He, he's, oh, he's, he's just been, been sensational. Season, he? So England captain, he stood up in it and he carried that team to victory. Well, let's turn our attention to uh, Castleford. Uh, they got beat by uh, Lee last week. They've uh, added to their coaching staff with Batley head coach Craig Lingard joining as an assistant. It's going to be a dual role. Let's hear from him. Fresh off your first day, just how you found it now have the, have the lads welcomed you? Yeah, they've been very welcoming. Um, obviously went into the meeting this morning uh, with everybody and uh, got introduced to the players and the players made me feel, feel really welcome. And I said it's good to get straight out there on the, on the field and get some, get some drills done and, and watch, watch the boys in action. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time for me and uh, I think an exciting time for the club as well over the next, next few years with a bit of a transition period, I guess. Are there any familiar faces on the playing side and the, and the coaching side that you know? Uh, Muzza, yeah, and uh, on the coaching side, and uh, Matt Crowther as well. I've been uh, going back uh, many a year into 97, 98, I think it was at Sheffield at the same time when Matty was there. Um, playing wise, there's, there's players uh, that I've, I've coached in, in scholarship uh, again a few years ago. Um, but, but a lot of people in rugby league you know each other now, don't you? Uh, so it's a lot of familiar faces. For 2023, your time will be split between us and, us and Batley. Just talk a little bit about how that will work going forward for this year. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty simple really because we uh, we at Batley train on a night time, so we train uh, train Tuesday and Thursday evening. So part time rugby you do it on a, on an evening because guys are working through the day. Uh, full full time rugby it's, it's during the day, so it, it works pretty well. So my workload will be quite heavy uh, to start with this season. Um, but I've made a commitment to Batley at the start of the season and made a commitment to the players as well that we were going to see the season out together and that's what I wanted to do. And and luckily for me, Castleford gave me that opportunity to see the season out with Batley. Um, Earl, fair play to Craig Lingard. He said he's got a commitment to Batley to the end of the season, so he's going to do a dual role. And it's going to be tough for him, obviously, but he could have quite easily have just walked away from Batley and he hasn't. Yeah, it's an unusual one, isn't it, I think, as well. So he's got a, a foot in both camps. Um, but I think it'd be good for his, his, his own development as much as anything else. But I, I do believe, he, we were talking about before, he's, he's a great bloke, a really nice guy. Uh, knows the game very well as well, so I think he's a good asset to Castleford. Um, I think it'll take a little bit of time for him to sort of, you know, gain that understanding of how he can do both. But I think it'll benefit both teams personally. I think he'll learn a lot from this and his own personal development as well. And I think Castleford, at the moment, probably need all that assistance they can get. He got to a playoff final last year, losing to uh, Lee uh, in the Championship. Is this a good signing for Cass? Obviously, he's got a strong association with Cass as well. It's a, it's a great signing for Cass. My only concern would be the workload. I, I know how yeah. hard coaches have to work, and I know it's in the day, And but some coaches are there till five or six o'clock, and if he has to go zip straight across the motorway and go to Batley and, and get his head down into that and completely think different things, then... I'm, look, he's a great coach and a great person, and, and you know I think he'll be able to do it. But it's a big job and a big ask for him. Yep. So good luck to uh, Craig Lingard, who's doing this dual role at Batley and a coach at Castleford. Right. All the latest news and live games here at the Sportsman. You're watching the Sportsman Rugby League, the home of Betfred Super League Online. Tune in to Last Tackle every Wednesday at six o'clock. <laughs> Yes, we'll keep you up to date with the uh, live games very, very shortly here on uh, The Sportsman. Uh, let's turn our attention to this weekend's games on Sky on Thursday night. Wakefield versus Hull FC. Uh, Luke Gale, former Man of Steel, is going to be in the Wakefield squad. Can Luke make the difference to Wakefield? Well, well, he can, and it's probably the hardest game for Luke because he was a former LFC yeah. player, so they're going to know all his attributes and all his weaknesses, and, and they'll go after him. I think it's Wakefield are up against it. Hull, Hull are riding high. They've got Jake Truman back. But if Wakey can replicate what they started to do against Warrington and not get anyone sent off, get a good feeling around the place, then who knows? No, if Wakefield are going to have any chance, home games against Hull... 
They've got to win, haven't they? They've got to fancy this one, that is for sure. Hull SC, uh, they're, they're in a bit better form now, aren't they? They're confident themselves. But Wakefield, off the back of that game against Warrington, must have a little bit of belief in themselves. I think if you looked at this game and thought about this being on TV um, only maybe a month ago, you, you think it might be pretty dire. I think things have changed quite a lot. Both teams finding their feet, finding a way to sort of get back into games at least, and Hull SC especially winning. I think that changes everything. This should be a really good, tight game. And we all know Luke Gale is a big time player, isn't he? Oh, he's quality. He's going to love this first game line yeah, of Sky as well, he, isn't he? He'll have his chest out. He'll yeah. expect to be the man of the match. He, he, that, that's what Gale is, and you wouldn't bet against him. I think it's really important for the start of the game for Gale and for retrospective sides. Whoever starts the best, I think, you know, the pressure will intensify on the opposition. Uh, prediction then. I think all FC just... You, just oh, you said at the beginning of the show you can't predict anymore, didn't you? Go on. <laughs> well, yeah. In your opinion, opinion, hang on, hang on. We should go all FC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd have to say the same. I think it's all FC, but you just feel like with Wakefield, the dual win is going to happen soon. And Luke Gale, he loves a one-pointer, doesn't he? Yeah. He just, he's that specialist and he's up for the they big They need some games. tries as well. He just can't get by <laughs> on one-pointers. Hey, who knows? <laughs> no, but good luck to uh, Luke Gale. Uh, he's in the Wakefield squad live on Sky on Thursday night. Cracker on Sky on Friday night. Wigan Leeds. And of course, Leeds won that semi final playoff at Wigan uh, last year. Wigan Leeds. I, I don't know what to make of Leeds this season. No, Jekyll and Hyde, aren't they? They're, they're up and down and, and probably a little bit more down than up. And, and I expect Wigan, you don't often see Wigan having two poor performances or two bad results. So, at home, uh, I, I can't see past Wigan in this one. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Wigan, they're the sort of team as well with the coach. I think when they lose, they probably get the biggest rollicking anyone's ever had. They always seem to have that mentality that it is not acceptable. One or two losses is just not acceptable. I can't see Wigan losing this one. Leeds a little bit all over the place. I don't think they're quite there yet. Uh, got some talent though. They've got some individuals that can score tries. Uh, but Wigan, I do think they'll be the stronger of the two and they'll win on the night. Also on Friday night, this is first versus third. Warrington versus Hull KR. See, I like both of these teams for different reasons, but Hull KR uh, showing a bit of class in the way they're controlling games at the moment. Warrington finding it a little bit tougher than they did at the beginning of the season, where I think other teams now are seeing them as, again, not invincible. They can be beaten and they're getting closer as well. And Wakefield showing that Hull KR looking really good off the back of a, a great win against Huddersfield. I'm going to mix up a little bit. Hull KR, I think, will come out on top. Well, obviously, Hull Cow on this great run out of six on the bounds. Yeah, and I, and I think this will be one of the biggest tests today. At home, they're very, very good, and it's an intimidating place to go. But going over to Warrington, they, they have got quite a good record over at Warrington. They knocked them out in the playoffs a couple of years back. And I, But I expect Warrington to, to snowball from the game at Wakefield. I think they've got over that blip, and I think Warrington in this one, Mark. Uh, also on Friday night, Castleford versus the Catalan Dragons. Yeah, Castleford are struggling out there a little bit at the moment and they're a team that you, you look at now, trying to find ways to win games and along with Wayfield, probably Huddersfield at the moment as well, which is horrible to talk about, but that is the reality of the situation. We're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, I'm happy about that, I can't wait. Uh, yeah. Catalan Dragons, I think they, uh, they're... They look strong. Grinding wins out as well. Always a little bit different when they're playing away, uh, but Catalan looking very strong for me. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, the halfbacks for Catalans, I think Sam Tompkins has really settled in. I do think it, I don't think it'll be all one way this game at the jungle. I think Castle will have a big say, but with Sam Tompkins and Mitchell Piers pulling the strings and Ikevalu who's come in looking very strong on that right edge, I just think they'll have too much class. Right, come on, Earl, you've got to talk about it. Huddersfield Giants versus the Lee Leopards. Yeah, well, I'm not somebody that will sit on the fence and I will say what I think as well. <laughs> Break the fence. Come on, um, I, I'm not impressed with Huddersfield at the moment. In fact, it's actually gutting to see how poor they are playing and the players that we've got. Uh, can they change that? Of course they can, but can they do it this week? I'm looking at Lee Leopards and seeing how enthusiastic they are, how they play together as a team and the style of play, attacking the line, getting right to the line, the ball handling, middles. Uh, they're a dangerous side and shouldn't be underestimated uh, uh, Lee are the favourites going into that game and rightfully so. Beginning of the season, this was Huddersfield's to win. And now I think it's Lee's to lose at this stage. And that's uh, for me, that's being honest. I want better from Huddersfield. I know they can do it. But Lee, they're the stronger team at the moment. 
Yeah, the, the, they're a more balanced side, I'd say. Individuals on paper, you look light for light. Huddersfield aren't far off, but the balance for me, when you've got three full-backs, there's, there's almost too much X-factor in that Huddersfield side. I think they need to strip it back to take a couple of steps forward. Um, whether you can do that in a week, I'm not too sure. But the, like Earl said, they're, they're massively off the pace. And I think Lee, yeah, the, the, they're the opposite. They're flying high. It was a great result of the weekend, winning by 30. So I expect them to go there and, and really go after Huddersfield and win that game. Saturday lunchtime, we've got a cracker live on Channel 4. St Helens, obviously under pressure versus Salford. Salford playing so well. Let's just talk about a milestone. Uh, James Roby set to make his 532nd appearance for St Helens, which be a record beating their former captain, uh, Kel Cosler, in uh, 1976. James Roby, how good has he been? How good is he, is he still? I think he's, he's still a, one of the best hookers in the competition. I think the fact sometimes you can, the history of a player, you can keep them in the team, but on merit, he, not only should he be in that side, when he's taken out, the performance levels dip. So, yeah. you know, I have the utmost respect, one of the hardest players I've ever played against and one of the most honourable, honest players I've played with. So, no, full credit to him, the durability of the man, the consistency of him. And, um, yeah, what, what a competitor, what a legend he is. And I think they already need to get the chisels out and start building that second statue. <laughs> uh, hell of a player and a really nice fella. Yeah, that, that, that's something I'd have said straight away. He's a great bloke and um, been very lucky to uh, play... Uh, with, alongside him at England and uh, spent a lot of time with him as well and see how humble he was instantly and not the sort of character he hasn't got that ego he's just got a desire to yeah. keep working hard be a professional and uh, just keep doing what he needs to do and uh, that's something that I admire and there's a lot of players within the game that I don't agree with how they come across I, I believe in role models especially for when we're bringing young players through and he epitomises that I think he's absolutely brilliant as a person as well as a rugby player and to do what he does week in week out after th th so many years he almost uh, goes missing in the sense that he's just expected to be in that position and do his job every single game he's just never ever lets the team down I think he's a fantastic good coaches fantastic always player. say don't they that the, the best players the the best performance and the worst performance there's not much in it and they're almost exact I've never seen him have a bad game yeah and, and when he does have a That's good game how good he is isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah he, he just he, he he, yeah so his worst game is probably better than 95% of everyone's best. What about the actual game then, St Helens versus Salford? I think Saints will bounce back. I think, I think they'll be really hurting yeah. internally. I think they'd have had a good chat this week and, and it's about time now that they forget all the stuff that's gone behind them and, and in the past in terms of the hangover. Salford are a really good side to play against because they'll know they'll have to play well. But I think Saints will come good this week. I do. I think it'll be a step too far for Salford and I think Saints will get them. I'm a massive fan of Salford, really I'm a massive fan. The way they play, the balance that you've talked about, the halfbacks, they really control the game. St Ellen's, I think, have got that X factor. I think they've got that, that little bit of something special where certain individuals can stand up and uh, just score amazing tries, like Wellsby, for instance. I think Saints will bounce back. I think it'll be those players that stand up, they'll do something special, but Salford will be in this to the end. Some cracking games to uh, look forward to next weekend. It's the Betfred Challenge Cup, but we're just three weeks away from Magic Weekend. Make this Magic Weekend one to remember. Oh my word, what a try! Six Betfred Super League games at St. James's Park on the 3rd and 4th of June. Out of your seat action, last minute drama, and a party atmosphere. Magic Weekend has it all. Tickets start at just £25 for adults and £12.50 for juniors. And what a sporting weekend that is going to be. You've got Magic Weekend, you've got the Betfred Derby at Epsom, you've got the FA Cup final as well, Manchester United versus Man City. It's a huge sporting weekend. Like I've been lucky enough to go to Newcastle uh, quite a few times. I know you fellas have. It's a brilliant Magic Weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I've been very lucky to uh, play in it and also yeah. go as a spectator as well and as a fan of the game. Um, not just on the field what happens, but off the field, as in Newcastle in itself is a wonderful place, yeah. surrounds some great people, some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, I'd 
advise anybody to take the opportunity to go up and witness it because who knows it may not be around forever they have talked about this uh, but if you get the opportunity do it because it's absolutely sensational and i'm a massive fan of it it's a brilliant weekend isn't it? it's great and it's what our sport is really good at we can celebrate yeah. all the fans in one venue very little trouble if any uh, everyone gets along, people are dressed up, the pubs are very, very close, I think that's what yeah, Earl yeah. means by it's a great place. Uh, and, and the stuff on the field's always magical as well, and the way the Super League competition has started this year, there's going to be some of the best games that Magic's seen, so yeah, get down there, get it on the telly, whatever you're doing, watch some rugby that weekend. And as a final question to both of you, uh, next week we have got the Betfred Challenge Cup. And there's some cracking ties to look forward to. There is. Uh, I think the one that stands out to me is Salford and Huddersfield. I think yeah. that's going to be a cracker. The, 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 the wheels are wobbling a little bit at Huddersfield. There's the coaches of, of you know, Watto was coach and, and took a few players to Huddersfield from Salford. So there's that little bit of rivalry as well. So I'll be glued and watching that one. And minutes away from winning it last year, of course. Yeah, well, in fact, even less. I think winning the last minute was just a kick through by Wigan. Very smart play, and that one will live in my memory as one of those horrible games yeah. and so close, but yet so far. Salford, uh, again, a different prospect at the moment. I really like what they do. I really do. Uh, Huddersfield have really got to step up, and they've got to do it fast. Uh, can they do it this weekend? Well, gents, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the last tackle as we build up to the Betfred Challenge Cup.